Hi and welcome to this video series. In part one we talked about data normalization and its importance to building database applications. In part two we talked about one-to-many relationships and how they're defined inside Caspio. So if you haven't seen the first two parts I recommend that you do so prior to watching part three because we piggyback on what we learned in those two videos. And in the last part of this database relationship series, we'll talk about many-to-many -many relationships and how they're defined inside Caspio. Let's take a look. So what exactly is a many-to-many -many relationship? A many-to-many -many relationship happens when each record in the parent table relates to multiple records in the child table, and each record in the child table can belong to multiple records in the parent table. And Caspio is similar to most major database management systems where many-to-many -many relationships are possible via a third table. Let's take a look at a quick illustration. If you recall from the prior video, we had a table of companies and each company had a primary key or a unique identifier. We also had a table for sales reps and we identified using a one-to-many relationship which employee belongs to what company. So we know that if Jerry, Jenny, and Terry, since they have company ID number one as a foreign key, that they belong to company A. Kyle and Ray belong to company B, and then Casey and Evan belong to company three. So, so far we're looking at a one-to-many relationship. But let's introduce another table of products. And the table of products also has a primary key, and what the sales reps are selling basically is a laptop, monitor, or a fax number. So now what we do is we introduce a third table that's going to store all of our orders. And the third table is basically going to take the primary key from the sales rep table and the primary key from the products table and put them inside the orders table. This is how we create a many-to-many -many relationship inside Caspio. For example, if we look at the orders table, we see that the rep ID as a foreign key has number one twice. That means that Jerry Jones placed an order twice. And the products that he ordered are one and two. And in our products table, those products are laptop and monitor. So now we can see that Jerry Jones placed two orders, one for laptop and one for the monitor. But we also have Jenny Skittles, who placed an order as well. And Jenny also placed an order for a laptop. So we can see that ID number one repeating inside the orders table. So now you can see how a parent table relates to multiple records in the child table and each record in the child table relates to multiple records in the parent table. This is what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. Let me give you one more example. Let's imagine our application has a table of doctors. And just like the companies, each doctor has a primary key. We also have a table of patients and each one of our patients also has a primary key. So we have to merge these two IDs into a third table, and we're going to call this third table visits. And all the third table is going to do is store these primary keys as foreign keys, and with that we can define a many-to-many -many relationship. So for example, looking at John Doe, John Doe had two visits, and he actually was visited by patient one, which is Scary Wiles, and patient four, which is Jesse Niles. Ben had three visits. And Ben had a visit also from Kerry Wiles. He also had a visit from Mike Awesome and a visit from Tammy Shales. So now we know that Kerry visited two doctors. And lastly, we have Susan Smith, who also had three visits from patients. And the three visits that she had was from Mary Evening, also had a visit from Kerry Wiles, and a visit from Tammy Shales. So what this illustration shows us is now we can track and see what patients visited what doctor. So a patient can belong to more than one doctor as you can see from this illustration. Now let's log into Caspio and let's take a look and see how we can configure this setup directly. In the interest of time I have already created two of my tables. So we have the doctor's table and the patient's table. Inside my doctor's table I have doctor ID and the name. You can see in the table design that my doctor ID is set as an auto number, which is a unique key. My patient table is set up the same exact way. We have the list of all of our patients and you can see in my table design that the patient ID is also an auto number or a primary key. 
So to create the many-to-many -many interface, what we need to do now is introduce a third table. So I will create this table from scratch. And I will have visit ID, which is going to turn into a primary key, auto number, because every visit should have a unique ID. Then we're going to have doctor ID, which will turn into an integer. And we're also going to have patient ID, which is also going to become an integer. And all we're trying to do is stamp our primary keys from the doctors and patients table inside this table called visits. So we'll call this TBL visits. And I'm actually going to show you how to build a form so that we can populate data inside this visits table. But before I do that, let's go to the relationship screen. And let's bring over all three of these tables. So we have the doctor's table, patient's table, and the visits table. And the visits table is actually going to be in the middle because what we want to do is basically stamp the patient ID and the doctor ID inside this middle table. So we're going to move over the doctor ID and link it to the doctor ID from the visits table and that's going to be a one-to-many relationship. And we also have the patient ID to patient ID also set up as a one-to-many relationship. So in a way, it's two one-to-many relationships that are going into this third table that's storing those primary keys as foreign keys. And with this kind of a setup, we can actually create that many-to-many -many functionality. So now let's save this layout. Let's go directly to data pages and let me teach you how you can store this information into the visits table. What I'm going to do is build a submission form. We're going to hit next and then we want to build this form based on the visits table because that's where we're going to be storing all of those primary keys. We're going to use a style called burgundy. Let's hit next. Let's include both of our fields in our submission form. And what we're going to do here is create two simple dropdowns. So using the form element field, we're going to select drop down. And for my doctor ID, I'm going to use a lookup table. And I want to look inside my doctor table. I want to display the doctor's name, but I want to store the doctor's value or their primary key inside this visits table. We're going to repeat the same process for patient ID. So set this up as a drop down, lookup table of patients and we want to display patient's name but we want to store patient's ID inside that visits table. So now when you hit next here you can either have a confirmation message to be displayed after you submit the form or you can just have that same form refresh and in this example that's what I'd like to have. We're going to hit finish and now I have my submission form that I can deploy to my website. Instead I'm just going to hit preview and I'm just going to make a few entries here. Let's just say that we have Dr. Ben Jones and today he was able to see Jesse Niles. We're going to hit submit. Let's say tomorrow Ben Jones actually had a visit from Carrie Wiles. And let's say that a different doctor, John Doe, also had a visit from Jesse Niles. And now when you make these three submissions, what's happening in the database of the visits table? Let's take a look and open it. What you're going to see is all of these IDs actually stored inside the table. So we know that this is the doctor ID and this is the patient they actually saw. There's another doctor ID here as well. They saw patient ID 1 and we have doctor ID 1 who oversaw patient ID number 4. Where all of this comes together now is when you actually go down to views to create this relationship between these three tables. So instead of actually seeing these IDs directly from the table, you actually get to see patients names that correspond to that specific ID. Also when you're building your reports, if you go back to the relationship screen which I covered in the prior video, if you right click on the relationship and click edit, you can actually display the name of the doctor in the data page. So if you build a report, instead of seeing the ID, the actual ID, you'll get to see the name of that doctor. This concludes the video series on database relationships. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like it. Also, don't forget to subscribe for the latest tips and tricks on how to use Caspio. And last but not least, visit us at howto.caspio.com for any of the latest videos and articles on how to use the platform. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and see you next time.